Recently, I received a very nice surprise from a very nice man from a very nice company. Now, as delighted as I was, me being me, I immediately wanted to put these gifts to the test. How do they compare to old traditionals and new favourites? So, it's FX Hybrid Slugs versus JSB Hades versus Standard Diablos. <laughs> Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. Today it is time I jumped on the Slugs bandwagon, but with a different viewpoint. I wanted to know how good they are, are they up to all the hype that we've heard, and how do they compare to cheaper expanding pellets and the billion-year-old Diablos? This review has to be completed without bias, and the only way I can see that is possible is by simply using facts figures and results. Naturally, I'm going to be looking at accuracy and I will be getting Mrs. AAR to cook up some ballistic gel to check out the deformation characteristics. I want to know what they do to power levels, not only from the barrel, but down range, to see if they hold onto the energy more efficiently at point of impact than the competition does. And, of course, I will be looking at them in an FX gun and a non-FX gun. I will be looking at FAC results and sub-12 foot-pounds too. So, chrono work, target work and cooking, all in the name of science. And, hopefully, a bit of fun too. Let's start with a look at Exhibit a, the FX Hybrid Slugs. They come in packs of 100. They are nicely separated into individual slots and it does have a very special feel to it with a hard plastic base to keep them all nice and safe. I like it, but I can't help feeling this is adding to the already high price of these slugs because they work out about the same price for 100 slugs as you would pay for a normal tin of 500 pellets, which is quite expensive. But it's probably going to be more down to whether they represent value for money or not. First thing to do was to try them in an FX gun. I had one .22 calibre available at the time, the FX Impact Compact which was shooting a little hot, and because these slugs are 22 grains and in .22 calibre, the extra power may help a little. So, quite excitedly, I set everything up looking forward to see the results, and nothing. Nothing at all. Now, I had been told that they may not suit all barrels in sub-12 foot-pounds, but I thought an FX firing north of 13 foot pound would be the one to do the job. Wrong. I now had a pellet stuck in the barrel and a careful job to get it out. So I didn't bother to try any more in the impact. So what about something else? I tried them in my Daystate Pulsar and they did fire. So it must be said that what I'd been told was indeed right. They don't necessarily suit all guns and all barrels. Now, before anyone asks, no, I don't have a list of all the guns that they will fit. This is a trial and error situation, I'm afraid. Right. To me, then, it would appear these are pretty much intended for use in FAC and higher power guns. So at this point, and keen to get some results, it was straight to my FAC Huntsman Regal. They fit perfectly into the Daystate magazine and don't catch at all. Then, trying to load them, they are very tight. Carefully, though, I pushed it home and little concerned that I was then going to need to get the rods out again to clear the barrel. But no, straight out, what felt like a reasonably quick pace as well. I was firing at my FAC rated trap and blime it, it sounded like it was going to go straight through it. This rifle normally kicks out about 35 to 36 foot pounds. 
and at 891 feet per second, which was 38.8 foot pounds, and it didn't feel as though it was at the cost of speed at the target. The chrono that was risking life and limb, all in the name of science and entertainment, at the point of impact, it revealed it was indeed holding on to a lot of speed and saw 839 feet per second at 40 meters distance, which equates to 34.4 foot pounds, which means it had retained 88% of its energy, which is amazing at that distance. These were starting to look like that value for money thing was starting to stack up. So how did they compare to a new favorite of mine? The JSB Hades. These are much lighter at the standard 15.89 grains. At the barrel, these were travelling at a much faster 997 feet per second, but this only equated to 35.08 foot-pounds because of the lighter weight. The surprise was that out at 40 metres, they were travelling at 765 feet per second, which is only 20.65 foot-pounds. That was a major shock because it was retaining only 59% of their energy at that range. Now, I love these Hades pellets, and I have had a lot of success with them, but I hadn't tested them for power at point of impact before, and this was a real shock. At this point, I was really keen to compare them to the standard Diablo. Again, JSBs, 15.89 grains, at the barrel... 986 feet per second or 34.37 foot pounds and out at 40 meters 831 feet per second or 24.37 foot pounds which is a retained 71 percent this can surely only be down to the aerodynamics of the hades but even though they are losing speed and power i've still found them to be very accurate in the past but we'll take a look at the accuracy thing a little later. Whilst we're looking at the standard Diablo shapes, time to throw in a heavier weight JSB. This time the 18.13 grains. This was leaving at 946 feet per second, which is 36.04 foot pounds, and holding on to 817 feet per second, or 26.88 foot pounds, at 40 meters which is a healthy 74% retention. Looking at the results then, the hybrid slugs is fast for its weight, retains huge amounts of that speed at 40 metres, and above all hits the target with as much force as the standard Diablo starts with, which it has to be said is quite impressive. The standard Diablos each retained 70 plus percent of energy, but it's still still doesn't even come close to the slugs. The Hades were a complete shock to me with such a low retention of speed and power at the point of impact. Of course, we all know that power is nothing without control. So to be able to use that energy, they have to be accurate. So let's take a look at the target work, shall we? Out at 40 metres on a breezy day. Again, shooting from the Huntsman, FAC. Hades pellets first. Yes, as I've experienced in the past, not bad at all. And I have, on better days, had tighter groups than that. 15.89 grains next. Standard Diablos. Again, as I would expect them to be, not quite as accurate as the Hades, which is what I've found in the past. Bigger Diablos then next. I say bigger, heavier is the point here. Again, very similar to 15.89 grains in the results. Ah. 
OK, now the slugs. No fancy liners here. These are hybrids, which means they're supposed to shoot from standard barrels just as easily. Well, blimey, I didn't expect that. They are impressive. Hmm. These are starting to really grow on me. Now, I must stress, as I have in the past, different guns and different barrels can favour different ammunition. But these are proving to be really very impressive. Sub 12 foot pounds. Well, this was going to be the section where I looked at using them in a UK power rifle to see if they are indeed worth having for the vast majority of the UK shooters. As I've said before, these will suit some guns and barrels better than others, and they wouldn't even fire out of the FX impact, as we've already said. So it was down to the pulsar. And they would just about come out of the barrel at UK spec. What power? Well, the Chrono was struggling to read them. They were that slow. Now, I managed to get hold of a hot Pulsar that was capable of around 15 to 16 foot pound and tried them in that. Well, the Chrono read them at about half of the energy at the barrel. From this result, I wasn't going to risk my chrono out at 40 metres or take this test any further. This would tell me you're pretty much wasting your money in anything less than an FAC rifle. From an accuracy point of view, these hybrid slugs are very impressive. The power at the barrel and retained at point of impact is really impressive and needed very little holdover or under adjustment at different ranges from the 40 meter mark, which would hint at a fairly flat trajectory. The deformation test. The final test for the FAC rifle is to fire them into Mrs. AAR's ballistic gel to get a look at the deformation characteristics. These weren't shot at point blank range, they were out at 40 meters into a slab of Mrs. AAR's gel. Because we were outside, I was relying upon daylight rather than studio lighting, and sadly it wasn't as bright as I would have liked, but the results are still pretty clear and yet again surprising to me. First in was the FX Hybrid Slugs, and these are the ones that carry most energy at the target. They came to a halt after only nine centimetres. They made a very clean entry wound with rippling and shock along the way. The next up in the test were the Hades pellets. A bigger entry hole travelled 12 centimetres into the gel and left shock and deformation of the pellet. The standard Diablos kept their shape and energy, entered the gel showing signs of shock and proceeded to travel all the way through 21 centimetres of gel and out the other side. The shock to me was all that energy that the slugs carry. The depth of penetration was the lowest, which means all that energy has dumped itself in the target, which is pretty much exactly what you want. Hard hitting and heavy energy dumping. The Hades, as usual, opened up at the front, slowing them down and dumping that energy by deformation. The slugs, on the other hand, deformed so much, they turned themselves inside out, causing the dump of energy. This would leave the slug easily inside the quarry with maximum shock. As is often the case these days, a lot of the airgun world and industry is starting to focus quite heavily on the American or FAC market, and a lot of the ammo and ancillary stuff seems to favour the higher power levels. These hybrid slugs seem to echo that point. The bottom line for a lot of people will be that elephant in the room, cost. These are not a cheap item. 
They are an excellent product in the right gun and will give very pleasing results on accuracy, power and deformation. I must admit for specific pest control where limited number of shots are going to be the order of the day, these are very likely to be sat in the Huntsman's magazine from now on. But if I need an all-rounder pellet for target plinking out and about where I'm likely to get through some ammunition, then I'll probably still hold on to my favoured Hades, which have in the past proven themselves out in the field. And in sub-12 foot pound rifles too. It also shows how a standard Diablo should never be underestimated either and still has its place in our sport as the preferred and cost-effective all-rounder. Well, hopefully this hasn't just been another FX promotion programme and you have learnt a bit without the cost involved by doing all these tests yourself. No doubt this has simply opened up the next question around what about slugs from other companies? No doubt a review for the future. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Please, as always, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to hit the alarm bell. Visit us at aaronair.com where there's all sorts going off, including the forums and groups, which are growing daily. And follow us on Facebook too. That's it until next week. Stay safe, shoot safe, and thank you for watching.